Good morning, as it is, or any other time of day to anyone who's watching this. I'm Andrew Gibbons um, with my new blurry black background. Well, not a black ground, it's a background. Um, and I've got Rebecca Norton with me today. Rebecca, as ever, tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do briefly. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm Rebecca Norton from Sheffield and uh, my business is called Sense of Direction. I'm a life and wellbeing coach, particularly interested in wellbeing and getting people outdoors. And we both are very interested in the whole time to think Nancy Klein stuff, which you got me into. I never lose a chance to attribute the source of that. And today, what we're going to do is go through the 10 components which Nancy Klein makes clear and are very challenging within uh, her excellent book. And this is where I attempt to show my um, less than excellent skills at uh, the business of coming up with, sorry, I'm filling space here while I do this. Is that, you've seen that all right, Rebecca? Yeah, okay. There's the man at the window. Okay, don't worry, folks, it's always like this. There's good stuff to come. Um, so this is a man looking at the window, taking time to think, and it's all about contextualizing this book, which is where it started from, which is Nancy Klein's Time to Think book, <clears throat> followed by More Time to Think, and indeed, the particularly challenging book last year, 2020, which is The Promise uh, That Changes Everything, um, I Will Not Interrupt You. <laughs> oh, yes, we're going to have some fun with that one when I get round to it. So it takes us on to the 10 components of a thinking environment. This is not conceptual. This is not airy-fairy. This is not some sort of theoretical nonsense. This is absolutely challenging, well-grounded in your face stuff. So, clock running, Rebecca, off we go. We're trying to keep these fairly tight. We'll look at them one at a time. The first one being attention. I've summarized that in three words, which is very unfair. Attention, listening with respect. If I can just say one more thing on this, and I'm looking at my, my brief notes as she summarizes it in Time to Think. Listening with respect, interest, and the bit I've missed there because I couldn't fit it on the line, fascination. Come on then, where's that take you, Rebecca? Yeah, I love this one. This is interesting, isn't it? And, and the other thing that she says around this is the quality of your attention determines the quality of other people's thinking. And I think that's really important as well. How, how often do we get somebody's full attention um, when we're having a conversation with them or when we're in a meeting and things? And, you know, it does make a huge difference. You can tell whether somebody's listening to you fully. But I think, like you said, the fascination bit is interesting as well. Is we, we genuinely have to take an interest and be curious about what the other person is saying. Um, yeah, so I, I really like that one as a first one. I think that is very, very important. Well, I'm trying to live this, which is very difficult for me to do. And I'm trying to show interest, respect, and indeed, fascination for what you're saying. And it's, it's too, you can't fake this stuff. You either feel it or you don't. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think, I think these components are, like you said, they are challenging. And I think it's only because we are live in a society where a lot of these now aren't practiced regularly. Um, so I think all of us really appreciate it when somebody gives us our attention if you think about it with kids all right so kids always know whether they've got your full attention or not and if they haven't they will find a way to get it and unfortunately that's often by misbehaving isn't it you know and to some extent mm -hmm. we sort of take some of those things I think sometimes not necessarily by misbehaving but we might try and do it in sneaky ways um and actually when you have got somebody's full attention at first I think it can actually be quite uncomfortable because we're not used to it. Mm. To have somebody sitting there giving you their full attention, it's like, ooh, hang on a minute, I'm not sure mm. what I like. So that could take some getting used to, but it, it makes a huge, huge difference because once you relax into that, I think it really does generate, generate sorry, um, quality thinking. I, I've got a four-legged animal at my feet here that wants me to be interested and fascinated by him, and I'm trying to ignore him. Um, so I think you're so right. I can remember the very few fingers of one hand time when I have felt genuinely and prolonged in a work context listened to. They're that rare. Uh, and I'm talking about people who, who will sit in front of you. A, a chief executive comes of mine in my first job. 
and it will just say, this is interesting, tell me more. We don't hear those words. We don't see that behavior. We don't see someone not distracted by the things, the door opening, the phone ringing, looking at their screen at their text, that sort of stuff that was before all that, by the way. Um, we don't see people fascinated by what others say. No, and I, you're right, though, it's partly because of all these distractions that we have. So I think setting up a thinking environment is really important. And one of those things needs to be that people have to be present in the space and doing that by whatever they need to, whether that's turning off digital devices, whether that's just taking a couple of minutes to do some deep breathing, be physically present in that environment so that you can give your full attention because we can't unless we've, we've got rid of the distractions or minimize them at least. Do you think people can change? Do you think that people who others have been accustomed to as not listening with respect, not showing interest, not being fascinated, do you think those people can change embedded behaviours? Uh, that's a difficult one. I Ultimately, my optimistic sense would say yes, I do believe everybody can change. Whether they want to is a slightly mm. different matter, and also it takes time. This isn't something that can be changed overnight. Um, and I think for people to change where it's not natural for them, I think they would need to see a really clear demonstration of why it's beneficial to change. So I think it's possible, but not easy. Mm. And I'm, I'm deliberately, and not in a fakey sort of way, making a point of thinking before I respond to you, because that's too often what we do. We just come in straight away, someone's finished. That demonstrates you haven't been thinking. So what's that make me think? What... <sighs> What is in it for them? If someone's finding it hard to change, if people are settling for what I call acceptable underperformance, as good as I am, not as good as I could be. And if, as you say, and I agree with you, they can change. Humans are capable of change. Do they want to? Why should they want to? What's the motivation for being better at this? Because we have to have a deeper level of understanding, tap into that deeper level of of skill as well or purpose I think as well so I think there's nothing like a feeling of knowing that you're doing something really really well and a lot of people have untapped potential when they're given that full attention and that space it allows you to dig deeper and maybe come up with ideas that's buried somewhere but are still there nevertheless and gives people that opportunity to share ideas that perhaps they haven't shared before not, a, not as many people as we'd like to believe see value in that, um, at particularly a leadership managerial level in organisations, by my observation of 40 years. By my observation of 40 years, I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, that's all good news then, because I've seen a procession of people who see value in others' perspective and want to develop the talent of others. No, I haven't. I've seen a procession of people who like to dominate, use their authority uh, improperly, intimidate treat all great ideas as their own only, squelch the ideas of others, don't perceive how they can intimidate others. And that worries me because this simple statement of listening with respect, interest and fascination, I fear is too much for an awful lot of people it's dependent upon for organizational success. It does, right, I do agree. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not easy. And um, But I do have faith. I have faith that people would want to experience this more often if they'd experienced it once and saw the value in it. All right. I like your enthusiasm and positivity. We said we keep these short one at a time. Let's pause this one here. These are all things we'll come back to, but let's yep. stop this one at this point and then we'll work on the second. Yep.